Hey everybody, I'm on Necessary from Appalachian Baits. This portion of our video, we're going to show you the different ways that I rig uh, these baits to get the full effectiveness of it. First of all, starting off with uh, the mountain cricket. Got the little mountain cricket right here. Uh, like I've said earlier, I like to use the 132nd jig head when I'm doing that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and you can do it upper bottom on your, your jig head, but you want to take your hook and go right down through the middle of your mountain cricket. And where your hook starts to turn right there, that's where you want to bring your cricket to. And then that's when you want to bring the barb out and have it where it lays straight on your jig head. Just like so. You don't want to hook it through the back. And you can push it up on the barb if you want to, but I don't. I usually just set it there. And you can also take your nail clippers, and we'll show this later on how to take that barb off real quick. But that's the way I like to do it. And that way, when I'm jerking and twitching that cricket, it, it will actually swim through the water, and you can twitch it. So if you don't have the jigs and you want to do it, if the water's super low, you can take a number 12, in this case, I've got a number 12 scud hook, and you do the same thing. You're gonna put it on there to where it starts to bend and rotate down, and then bring your hook out, and then you just slide it up on your hook. And like so. So it hangs straight like that. You don't wanna hook it through the back. If you hook it through the back, it's gonna get in a U when it's in the current or it's going through the pool. And those little, it's not gonna let those little legs and arms twitch the way you need to do it. So you wanna make it to where the crick is straight so you can jerk it and it twitches and it moves through the water. It'll get you a lot more bites doing it that way. All right, that's the crickets. And you don't have a lot of, have to have, a, I mean, you can use a bait holder hook if you want to, just use your number eight, number 10. You don't have to use the scud hooks, whatever's comfortable with you but you don't wanna use a big, big hook on those crickets because it's not gonna let, let them flow right in the water. Our worms, like I said earlier, our worms are two and a quarter inches long. Now, you can fish them on a jig, and I've done that before, and a lot, a lot of times in the spring, I'll use them on a jig because the trout are down. You gotta remember as you're fishing, uh, early spring, you don't have a lot of insects hatching out because it's cold. So the, the trout aren't really gonna rise. Plus fresh stock trout, they'll go straight to the bottom anyway. So if you wanna use these worms, to keep from tearing this worm head off, because I told you it's skinny, you can take actually just a pair of clips, snippers, and you can snip that little barb off to slide it on up. But once again, all I'm doing, and I'm not gonna shove this one all the way up on the head, start down through the middle, and when you get to where it starts bending, down on, down on it, just like that, then you take it, bring your point through, and slide it on up there. You want that bait to hang straight. That way when you're twitching it, you're letting that, that right there do the work. You can also use a number six hook, uh, barbed, or a non-barb and do the same thing. You just slide it all the way up to the eye if you don't have any jig heads. But if you wanna get it down to the fish, just pull your sinkers down a little bit closer so this gets down to where the fish are. Another one of my favorite ways to fish these worms is what I call wacky rigging. Now wacky rigging, I like to use a real small hook, the smaller the better. A lot of artificial worms will have collars on them. I don't have collars on mine because I think that collars inhibit how the, the worm works. Now remember these are light and they are skinny but you just take the small hook, you can use a size 12, 14 is ideal. And sometimes you may need to use a sinker if you're fishing fast flowing water. But uh, this thing really, like yesterday over at Hawkins Mill, a young lady was needing her last fish. I put this on without any weight because it was slow moving pools and I just dropped it down in there and I pull it up and let it fall. When I, when I seen it fall and it fell out of sight and was on the bottom, I pulled it up slowly again, let it fall. That's how the trout were hitting them. Now, there was an older gentleman 
that was using this early in the morning and had his limit in less than an hour and caught two huge fish doing this wacky rig method on this very worm, the bubble gum. So the bubble gum worm works really well, but that's how we rig the bubble gum. Now, as I stated before, uh, with the eggs, the eggs, well, I like to fish them individual. I'll take and pop one off the string. And so you can see it, I'm gonna use this bigger hook here. I'm gonna use this number 10. But what I like to do, I don't go through the center of the egg. I go through the side of the egg and bring that hook out, like so. Because if you go through the center, you're gonna take away some of your penetration from your barb. But with the 14s that we provide that are smaller than this, you come through the side of it. Once that fish takes that, that into its mouth, that barb's already exposed. They're not really gonna feel it. And you can set the hook and, and you can get more penetration than if you were going through the center of the hook. Plus going through the side of the hook of, of the bait like this, taking it going through the side, you can catch several fish on this bait because it is a soft plastic, but you just keep rotating your egg, rotating your point, uh, your hook in and out all through the egg and you can catch a pile of fish off one egg. Now, the minnows, our mountain minners as we call them, I like to fish them on jig heads and one of my favorite jig heads early spring is the 1 16th Voodoo Custom Jig Head. Now what's unique about the jig heads that we sell, the Voodoo Custom Jigs, they're not what you find in the big box stores from the competitors. If you buy them, they are cheaper but they bend and they break. These are made with an owner hook that is very sharp and very strong, and you can catch some big fish on it. Now, once again, rotate that up to where we talked about earlier, where it bends, and this has got the keeper, and we just slide that minnow up onto the keeper like so. And what you have, and this is the, the 1 16th voodoo jig head, you want your minnow hanging somewhat straight so that little tail's doing the action, and as you're jigging it, it's going up and down, uh, and you're gonna catch a lot of fish on that. Now you can use a regular hook if you want to. Uh, a lot of people, you know, sometimes, a long time ago when I was fishing, and I wanted to get the bait down, I would pull my sinker, and I was just using the BB split shot, but I'd pull it right down on top of the hook to make that, get that jigging action, but you can do it with a jig, you can do it with your own hooks. But that's the way I thread and use all of our soft plastics. Um, you got to make sure that you're doing it the correct way to get the uh, maximum effect out of how that bait is working in the water. And remember, whether you're using the worm, the cricket, or, or the, the minner, you got to make it act alive. Twitch, twitch your rod, and if you can see your bait, that's even better. You can see them take it and everything, but twitch it and make it act alive. You'll catch a lot more fish. I hope this helps you out on all of our soft plastics that we make. Remember, they're American made. Most of them are scented, some are unscented, but you can go to AppalachianBaits.com and look at the variety, the whole, everything that we have to offer. So this is Alan Necessary with Appalachian Baits. See you on the creek bank.